Hey YouTube, what's going on? What is this? I have a whole cornucopia here of uh, some G1 Optimi. <laughs> I just figured I'd do something a little bit more special for this video review. I'm going to be covering uh, pretty much every iteration that I got of G1 Optimus Prime in my collection here. Uh, on the, uh, I'll start going uh, left to right. On the left I have uh, basically a Legion class G1 Optimus. Uh, Next one in, I got the uh, Hasbro G1 reissue of Optimus. Moving on, I've got basically like a deluxe class Creo Optimus Prime. Uh, following after that one, I've got... Um, he came in a two-pack with a... G he, he's a G1 styled Optimus, kind of styled after the MP01 mold a little bit, but a much, much smaller version. Uh, he came in a two-pack with a G2 styled Megatron. Uh, following him, I've got MP10, American release of Optimus. And then finally, furthest on the right, I've got the uh, MP01, the very first masterpiece uh, that was released back in, I believe, 2004. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into this and get started. I'm going to start with this uh, just this little Legion class guy here. He's really small. I got him for a couple bucks at a local... Um, little outlet store, kind of like a Big Lots. Uh, it wasn't a Big Lots, but it was a very similar type of store. He's a neat little figure. Not a lot to him in vehicle mode. I'll just go ahead focus in on him. And I dig him. Really cool. I paid a couple bucks for him. He rolls. That's pretty much it in uh, vehicle mode. I'm going to go ahead and put him to the side. Moving on, I've got the uh, G1 Optimus here on um, Hasbro reissue. Now, I did change out the smokestacks for longer smokestacks because he came with the short ones. I took a vintage G1 toy that wasn't in very good shape and swapped the smokestacks out. So he's got the regular length smokestacks now. But that is uh, the G1 toy. Really neat. He rolls really well. I love the way this guy looks in vehicle mode. I'm going to kind of put him off to the side because I'm going to do a special comparison with him in here in a few. I've got a deluxe class uh, Creo Optimus. It kind of resembles uh, the Voyager Classics Optimus Prime. I never actually did p pick up that Voyager. But in my opinion, that's kind of the closest... Uh, one that I got of, or that I've seen of this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and put him off to the side now. This is the one uh, that came in the two pack with a G2 style Megatron. Um, his vehicle mode, honestly, kind of looks like crap. Um, <laughs> it's just not well done, as you can see the mold. I mean, you can mount his gun there. That's slightly neat. He rolls, not a lot to him, but he is just. Not very good looking. MP10, cab, just the cab section alone. Um, wow, this thing is just great looking. There's the front of him. Uh, as you can see, he's got a ton of detail on him. He's got those little mirrors that are popping out on the side. Turn them around on the side there. The only thing I don't like about him is the proportion. Um, his legs are pretty thick in this mode. I've never seen a truck that actually looks like this in real life. If you did, can you imagine? Their proportions are somewhat off. But, I mean, other than that, this thing is absolutely great looking. And um, he is my second favorite Optimus cab mode. My favorite one... Honestly, it's just the G1, the original G1, but this is easily my second favorite one. And uh, let me go ahead and put him to the side. And then I'm going to finish off this section here with uh, MP01. This is the original Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Looks pretty, from the front, he looks awesome. Absolutely awesome. Now, on the side is kind of where... You know, uh, it starts to not look as great. His wheels honestly look a little bit small compared to the rest of his um, the truck cab. Now, you do have suspension on these tires. They 
they move up and down, which is a pretty neat feature. Front and uh, rear do it. Now what I don't like is this here. That just, ugh, compared to like MP10 and G1, uh, just does not look as good. I mean, he's not a bad looking mold by any means. I think he's a very good mold. In fact, when he came out back in 2004, I wondered how they could possibly do a better representation of G1 Optimus in toy form. I thought he was that good. I mean, he's still good, but MP10 does absolutely blow him away. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just get, and, oh, of course, they all roll really well. Obviously, they all got rubber tires, which I love. Um, you know, now one neat thing uh, about both the G1 and the uh, MP01 is uh, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but it says Formula Desert Dog actually is on the tire of the G1 toy, and it's also. Again, I don't know if you can read this or not. Same thing on the MP01. It's not on the MP010. It's not the end of the world, but just something I thought I'd point out. I'm going to go ahead and put the MP01 to the side because right now I'm going to do a comparison of trailers, and I don't have the trailer uh, for MP01 because I didn't get the release with the trailer. So, okay, YouTube, here's a G1 Optimus and MP10 trailered up. Um, as you can see, there's a pretty uh, significant size difference as um, G1 Optimus trailer and cab can fit on just the trailer uh, of MP10. Now, I know uh, if I actually had the trailer that fit with MP01, I could probably do a triple stack. I could probably put uh, MP10 on top of uh, the MP1 trailer and, and so on, you know. But uh, I've only got double because i only got two trailers, so... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put them side by side for you. That way, get another idea of the differences there. As far as the way these guys look uh, in vehicle mode with their trailers, uh, they're pretty close to equal as far as how much I like them. I am going to have to give the slight edge to MP10, however. Uh, he has much better detail than the original G1. Although the original G1 is no slouch. And uh, that issue that I was talking about with his... Um, legs being really thick on his cab it's less much less of an issue in appearance with his trailer attached now, I'm gonna go ahead though and uh, focus in on G1 Prime to start off with though and with his trailer attached obviously he still rolls extremely well no problem with that at all uh, he's got really good um, you know back and forth rolling um, of course, one cool thing is, you know, you can pop out his uh, little trailer bay there. Out pops roller with his gun attached. And uh, this is a trick that uh, most Transformer fans know about. Just in case some wild chance you don't, uh, you can fit pretty much uh, anything that's deluxe sized in G1 Optimus's trailer uh, without a hitch. I'm going to go ahead and... <laughs> Ah, his Creo self's a little bit too tall. But I've got a uh, Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class figure here. And as you can see, rolls in there fine. And he rolls out. Really neat little touch. That's something we love to do as kids. Put those uh, Deluxe Class figures in the G1 Optimus. Um, another neat thing you can do with G1 Optimus is... Split open this trailer, pop up his little uh, droid helper guy, not sure exactly what he's called, but you know, peeking out of his trailer, kind of being a battle mode for his trailer, because uh, he's got some missiles on him, some weaponry in his uh, vehicle mode, really, really cool. Uh, I remember when I got the original G1 toy back when I was six years old. I was pretty super excited about this. Um, you know, I can't even really describe that feeling. I, and to be honest with you, I was almost that excited again when I got the uh, MP10 version. Uh, that's how good he is. Um, but this guy is, like I said, G1. If you don't have a G1 Prime in your collection and uh, you're an older fan like me, grew up with G1... 
I would def definitely recommend picking up either A, an original G1, if you can find one in decent condition, or B, one of the millions of reissues that have been done over the years. He absolutely belongs in your collection. Go ahead and roll him out. And uh, focus just on the uh, MP10 now. He now on, he doesn't, uh, his cab doesn't swivel as much as uh, the G1 due to the way he attaches on his cab. I mean, that's not a huge problem, but it's just something I want think you should be aware of. Uh, he rolls extremely well. And he can actually fit in his, back of his trailer. Kind of got to yank up on it a little bit to open the uh, doors on the back. He can fit much larger figures in, obviously, because he is a much he's much larger than G1 Prime. I just slid an alternator skids in there. And uh, alternators are roughly Voyager sized maybe. And he fit in there no problems. And obviously he can pop right out. Really neat. Um, and he can do the uh, gun out of the uh, top two. His joints are a little tighter than the G1 Prime, so it takes a little more uh, pushing. Oh, get the get the guy out here. But you can have the same effect of the battle mode on his uh, in his vehicle mode. Pretty much anything the G1 toy can do, this guy can do too, plus more. He's got a lot more detail though. I mean, uh, he's got the uh, nice rivets there along the side of his trailer. He's got, even got them along the top, uh, the back. Let me go ahead. Can't really see into his trailer too well, but it's very highly detailed. We got the ramp and the two doors that open. I mean, that is just... Whereas on the original G1 toy, it's just kind of one piece that flops down. But, uh, I mean, just absolutely a great modern version of G1 Prime. Um, you know, that's that's pretty much all I got to say about these guys. Uh, vehicle mode, all these various Optimi. We'll be back in a flash with a robot mode. Hi, YouTube, and welcome to the robot mode portion of my uh, Opti Optima Palooza. <laughs> The various Optimi. Uh, I got them pretty much in the same order that I had them in uh, vehicle mode. Starting left to right. On the left I've got the uh, Little Legion class and I've got G1 Optimus. Next to him I've actually got a Creon because I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't really feel like uh, deconstructing and reconstructing that Creo into robot mode. Following him I've got that uh, G1 styled Optimus from that 2 pack that came with G1 Megatron. Next to him, I have the MP10 American release mold. And uh, next to him, the tallest there on the right, I've got the uh, MP01 mold way back from 2004, the very first Masterpiece Transformer ever. Anyway, I'll go ahead and just start off with the Legion class figure. Here he is. Pretty neat little guy. Let me uh, just get the camera focused on him a little bit better. Give you the full 360 on him. He's a neat little figure. Uh, we got uh, articulation. Doesn't have a lot. He's kind of similar to the G1 uh, Optimus in articulation. His legs, uh, they can move sort of. <laughs> they can move forward and back somewhat, side to side. Eh, they can go side to side more than they go forward and back. But he's got no knee or foot articulation, so that doesn't really matter very much. Uh, shoulder. We'll do the full 360 around. Uh, we got um, elbow articulation up, down, and around. And that's pretty... Now his shoulders can move back, but that has more to do with his transformation than actual articulation by design. He's a pretty decent looking little figure. I would definitely recommend getting him if you can find him somewhere for a couple of bucks like I did. I mean, I wouldn't pay uh, any large sums of money for this guy, obviously, but 
He's a fun little addition to your collection if you can find him. Go ahead and put him to the side. Grab our good friend G1 Optimus here. And uh, this, of course, is one of the classic figures uh, from the G1 line. Uh, these guys weren't known for great articulation, but he does have some. Uh, his head is uh, due to his transformation on this little uh, trap. I mean, you can make him look up, sort of. <laughs> it's not that attractive, but it's there. His shoulder goes up 360 around. And due to the way he transforms, it can kind of move back. Um, on his elbow, he can can sort it can go all the way around, but his body, of course, blocks that a pretty good amount. And uh, there it is, wrist. It turns around. Um, here at his legs, can bend at the knee, and he, due to his transformation, his leg bends all the way back. But and his foot can move now. You can't really do a lot. Uh, posing with this guy due to the fact of the way he has to stand and transform and stuff because like I said these guys were not built for articulation they, they were designed back in the late 70s early 80s but I gotta tell you if you are an older fan uh, you should definitely have this guy I'm gonna go ahead and put him to the side because I'm gonna do a special comparison with MP10 later with their trailers and such alright next up we got this little Cree on. He uh, just came with a uh, Creo set. Um, it was basically an uh, Optimus set uh, in the one you could build. It looked a heck of a lot like the uh, movie Optimus Prime. Um, and this is what this little guy came with. Go full 360 on him. Uh, he's got some articulation. He's kind of, you know, like Lego minifig. You could turn his head. Move his arms about, twist his hands, and his legs move, and he's got a twist there in the uh, torso. Pretty nifty little figure, if I do say so. I mean, he is pretty cool. Um, if you can find him, you know, in the set, or if any set that he comes with might be worth picking up. Um, what I really like is uh, the representation of his G1 rifle there that he's got. Overall, really neat little guy. I'll put him to the side. Uh, now we got the uh, Optimus that came with the uh, set with uh, the basically the guy that looked a lot like uh, G2 Megatron. He's actually got a fair amount of uh, posability built into him. He's got uh, his feet can move forward and back to the transformation. His knee bends, full 360 at the leg, in and out, to and fro. Now he has a little gimmick that I find kind of irritating actually because if you have his arms up, he tends to flop around, but let me show you the back of him. You see this little lever here? You push his lever, <laughs> he, uh, he <laughs> gun keeps falling down, let me just take the gun out of his hand. He, uh, he spins around. It's a kind of a fun little thing, but it does detract from the toy quite a bit because of the uh, floppiness there of the uh, top half of him. It's not a huge... I mean, if you put his arm down, that'll stop him from spinning around, so it's not insurmountable, but it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Anyway, moving on with his articulation. Uh, he's got full around at the shoulder, to and fro... He's got rotation on the upper part of his arm there. He bends at the elbow. Uh, and he can turn his head side to side. can look up some. Can't really look down. Overall, I'd say he's a neat little guy to have around. Um, you know, like I said, he's, he's not a must-have. Uh, but he is a nice touch if you do have him around. Go ahead and put him off to the side. Go ahead and grab MP10. Now this guy is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he is definitely my favorite G1 Optimus. Go ahead and lift that up. And let me move him back a little bit so you can see the whole 
because he is kind of a largish toy. I can move just a tad more. The camera up. I'll bring him in. About like that. Um, there's the front, and I'm going to go ahead and turn them around for you. There's the, there's the side. And there's the back. Absolutely phenomenal looking figure, no doubt about it. Go ahead and show off his articulation for you. He's extremely well articulated. Uh, at his foot, side to side. And uh, you can put, and the best thing, he doesn't, the foot doesn't really go back, but it goes forward and can bend down. Uh, you can really put his feet, he stands really well with his feet. Incredibly well, actually. Um, at the knee, bends forward, backward. Uh, he spins below the knee, uh, top of his leg, forward, back, to and fro. Spins somewhat, doesn't spin a whole lot. Uh, torso twist all the way around if you want to. Uh, on his hand, his fingers are not all, they're actually kind of the same as uh, Masterpiece Grimlock. They're not all individually articulated. You've got his lower three, which honestly I'm okay with. They're all one piece, and then we got his, now his thumb doesn't move. Now I guess that's uh, slightly less than MP Grimlock, but no big deal. Um, and then his finger actually has two points of articulation on it, his uh, index finger. You can do this and then put him out so he can point at something if you want him to. Um, obviously he rotates at the wrist there, elbow forward and back, rotates at the elbow, rotates there at the shoulder, his head up, down, all around. Really love the way his neck looks there. That pretty much covers his articulation. Um, he, of course, does have a built... Oh, he's almost top one over there. He, of course, does have a built-in matrix. So let me go ahead and pop it open his chest for you. His chest can be a little tough to open. There we go. All right. And uh, I don't know how well you can see that in the video, but uh, we definitely got a matrix in there. I'll take the matrix out for you so you can get a better look at it. It's in there kind of tight. There we go. There's a matrix. It's a neat little die cast uh, metal uh, matrix. Little, real shiny in the middle. I definitely like it. Go ahead and put the matrix back in there. Great looking figure. It's just awesome. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch on over to uh, MP01. The original masterpiece, uh, Optimus Prime. He's got quite a few tricks up his sleeve, but I don't like him quite as well as MP10 uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one of the main ones, and this is going to seem a little counterintuitive maybe to you, is the fact that he has so much die cast in him. Uh, the reason that's an issue is he weighs a lot. Um, so that can cause issues with his general stability. Uh, he's very poseable, but due to the weight, uh, it limits uh, how you can put him. And you're honestly better off kind of leaning him up against a shelf or doing something crazy with his leg so he can stand. Because standing straight, yeah, he can do it, but got to be real careful. He'll <laughs> The wind blows the wrong way uh, due to how top heavy he is. He'll fall over. Um, that's one major downside to him. Also, uh, the die cast tends to chip much more easily than the plastic. I haven't exactly been hard on my uh, Masterpiece toy, but he's got a good number of chips on him already. Uh, which, you know, and they're all on the metal. So, to me, that is a huge detriment. 
I'll go ahead and uh, show off all his articulation for you because he is pretty darn well articulated. Start with his feet here. They go forward and back, to and fro. Now, one neat feature he does have is if you push on his foot, it sends up the uh, vents on his legs. I do like that feature. That is kind of cool. But, I mean, I would just generally leave his vents up all the time like they are in MP10, so... It's just, it's a personal preference if you, on this guy, if you want to have him open, have him open, closed, whatever. Anyway, um, on his leg, he's got, uh, he bends back pretty good at the knee. Doesn't really bend forward at all, but that's okay. Um, upper leg spins around. If you move that little skirt, you can get it to go sideways, forward, and back. He's got a torso twist all the way around. We got uh, all the way around the shoulder. Bends all the way at the uh, above the elbow. Elbow, of course, bends in. His head spins all the way around. Can look up and down. It's on a ball joint. Now, I don't like the design of his head as much as uh, MP10 because the ball joint can get loose. Mine can't really look up anymore because if I put his head up it just flops right back down it's a little bit of a limitation um, it's not the end of the world he of course does have a matrix just like MP10 does so just open up his chest it is a bit easier to open up than MP10 though I gotta say just go ahead and uh, get that in the view of the camera you can see that matrix a lot easier than you could MP10's because of a few neat other little features. He's got a little communicator flip of things in his arm. On his uh, right arm, as you can see, he's got a uh, little star screen. And there's the detailing of the little buttons and stuff in his little communicator. On his left arm, He's got Bumblebee. Pretty neat. I like that little touch. That's pretty cool. And uh, he comes with some accessories. He comes with uh, three, actually. He comes with a uh, Megatron gun, his regular rifle, and an Energon axe. Now, if you want to use his Energon axe, what you do... Is you pop out this little panel down there, the bottom of his arm, uh, make sure his hand is a fist, and then just you can just shove his fist in, push that panel up, take the Energon axe, and uh, it just pegs in. And as you can see, he's got his Energon axe. Sorry for the lack of the head on this, but. Uh, kind of tough to shoot this one because of how large he is. Let me go ahead and put his gun in his hand for you. His n normal rifle. Now I'm not going to show off the Megatron gun uh, because mine unfortunately is a little bit broken. The uh, stock broke off of him. It's a common issue I think with the uh, MP toys. But basically the gun Megatron is just a representation of G1 Megatron in his gun form uh, that Optimus can hold. I actually have a Masterpiece Starscream holding it right now. <clears throat> Go ahead and get this rifle. And there is MP01 with both his rifle and his Energon Axe. Uh, honestly, he is a pretty neat looking toy. I mean, I got no real major problems with him, uh, but compared to MP10, uh, he is definitely, in my opinion, an inferior toy. But, he is nice to have him on a display shelf. I got him next to a bunch of alternators, and I feel he scales really well with them. Uh, so it's kind of nice to have him be the leader of the Autobot alternators that I have. So... If you can find him, he's definitely worth getting. Um, there's no issues with him. I wouldn't pay an exorbitant amount of money for him. So you can find him for maybe around 100 150 He's worth picking up any more than that. And uh, 
I would give them a pass, but you know that's that's up to you. Now I'm going to go ahead and show off uh, MP10's accessories. He comes with a uh, rifle and an Energon axe, and of course his trailer, which I'll get into here in a minute. Go ahead and uh, now the way you uh, arm MP10 is uh, you take his little uh, rifle here, and uh, there's little pegs on his rifle. It kind of pe it pegs into a part on his hand here. Let me show you that. I don't know if you can see. There's a little slot in his hand. So you gotta do take the rifle, you peg it in there, and you close the fingers around the rifle. And then you got MP10 holding his rifle. Uh, now, for his Energon axe, you just make his fist uh, with his other hand. Just make a fist. And uh, take the Energon axe. And then you just kind of slide it over his hand. That's pretty much it. And now he's got his Energon axe and his rifle. Um, <clears throat> here, let me put these two guys next to each other so you can see them both armed. Pretty neat looking duo there. Um, you know, but like I said, I do think the MP10 is better, obviously. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump into trailers and stuff. Uh, I'm going to compare MP10 and G1 Optimus, and that will pretty much wrap things up. So let me get MP01 out of the way here. Oh, one other note. As of the recording of this video, which is uh, February 2013, um, unfortunately, I don't think MP10 is being sold at Toys R Us anymore. So you're going to maybe have to get him on the secondary market if you want MP10. And, of course, that's going to mean he's going to probably cost you around 200 bucks or 200 and something. And, honestly, even at that price, if you love G1 Optimus... It's worth it. Uh, if you can save up for him, if you can afford him, whatever. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't buy him on a whim, of course, but uh, at that price. I was lucky enough to get him for 100 bucks, which is, considering uh, he kind of went in an initial wave at Toys R Us back in September of last year and, and sold out instantly, I was real lucky to get him for that price because my wife actually found him pretty much as soon as he went on sale. And I was real fortunate to get him for a reasonable amount of money instead of something crazy like, you know, a cup. Because he went up to 120 after uh, after being on the market a short amount of time. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show off some of the cool things about MP10's trailer at this point. We got the trailer pulled by our good buddy Roller there. I don't know if you can see him. That's a neat little thing that Roller can do. Uh, with MP10. I'm going to go ahead and just take the trailer off of Roller. Set it down. Let me show you some of the neat things about Roller. This here is Roller. He is extremely cartoon accurate. Um, he's even got the little uh, red light on him. I love the way this Roller guy looks. Uh, you can do a couple things with him. If you want him to hold Optimus's gun, he's got a little compartment here. Just flip it up, and you can tab Optimus's gun down into that. If you want him to tow the trailer, what you gotta do, you pull this little bad boy down here, you flip that around, and the trailer will peg into that. That pretty much covers Roller. Neat little accessory. I'm really glad they threw him in there. Now, as far as the trailer itself, you got uh, some options. Now, like the G1 toy, we got these little uh, sides that will hold out the trailer when it splits open. And the cool thing about these is when you pull it out, it kind of auto morphs down. You see that? That goes down to where you can, uh, so it'll touch the table there. Neat little touch. Um, and one other thing it has. 
if you don't want to do that. <laughs> Bear with me here, because... It can be a little tough to get out. He's got these little, uh... Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get one of them out, apparently. He's got these little, um, stands, and he's got two of them. I, mean, I only have one deployed because I couldn't get the other one down too easily. But, uh... It'll be real stable even with just those. Of course, the trailer does split open, just like uh, the G1 trailer did. This is what it looks like, uh, basically, from the top. Uh, it's got a ton of detail in there. I don't know how well it's coming through in the video. Uh, but, great looking uh, homage to the original trailer there. As you can see, we got his little uh, little droid guy there. I don't know what this thing is called. Repair droid, battle, I don't know what it is, but he's got the same little claw the G1 toy had. We open up. And, uh, of course, you can stand several figures in the trailer if you want to. Uh, you can do the uh, Optimus repair mode if you want. Oh, let me uh, go ahead and do that real quick. Parent Optimus, I guess. And uh, the last thing that this MP10 came with is a little miniature uh, Spike Witwicky figure. Let me go ahead. Oh. Optimus just fell down, but that's okay. I'll go set him down here. Let me just get Spike out of... I got him in the little repair guy, so let me just pop him out. And there's Spike. Uh, he's got some articulation going on on this little guy. He, uh, let me just get him in closer to the camera there for you. Got a spin at the shoulders. He doesn't have any torso twist. His head doesn't move, but no big deal. He's got two points on each leg. That's, that's pretty much it. That's his articulation. He's just a neat little um, accessory that came with Optimus. He's tiny compared to Optimus, obviously. I don't think he's in scale with what a human would actually be with Optimus. Because uh, a semi-truck I don't think is this much bigger than a person. But, you know, it's a toy. So it's not, not exactly a big deal. You see the two of them next to each other there. I mean, Spike is just a speck compared to Optimus. Um, let me go ahead and get those guys down. And I'll go ahead and show off uh, the G1 trailer for you and stuff, too, and the G1 roller. All that. Here's the G1 roller. Well, the reissued G1 roller in all his glory. You can peg Optimus' gun up into his uh, upper portion there. Obviously, you can peg Optimus's gun into his hand, needless to say. Here's G1 Optimus's trailer, which probably most of you have, I'm sure. You swing these little bad boys out here like so. This little piece goes down and uh, splits open in the middle. And this is what she looks like. Uh, now, it's got, he, now in this, it's not really molded in detail like most G1 toys. Most of the detail uh, is, of course, related to um, the stickers that are on there. Uh, they look pretty good. 
Now, unfortunately, uh, my trailer doesn't launch roller. Um, I know the original G1 trailer did. This one does not, so... I mean, with the old one, you could shoot roller out. He'd roll down the ramp and just shoot. But this one, unfortunately, doesn't do it. But it does everything else. We got the... Uh, out shoots missiles. I don't know if you saw that or not, but a uh, repair droid here. Can shoot his missiles. We got the uh, same kind of little arm there. And the, uh, you know, open and close with the claw. Spins around. There's not a lot to the trailer. It's very, you know... Oh, and of course, it comes with this uh, gas hose thing. And it's detachable, of course. I mean, that pretty much covers it uh, for all the various Optimuses. Uh, my favorite one, again, like I said, by far, is, of course, MP10. Um, like I said, if you can find them for a decent price, I definitely recommend picking them up. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know it was a long one. Um... And I'll see you next time.